Hi, and welcome to the channel. I'm Mean Poo, the narrator, and today we will talk about the performance of Bendy and the Ink Machine, which is a survival horror game developed and published by Kindly Beast under the name of the game's fictional animation studio, Joy Drew Studios, Inc. It was initially released to Game Jolt on February 10th, 2017, as the first of five chapters, including the bonus chapter, with a full release on October 27th, 2018. The game follows Henry Stein, a retired animator who returns to his old studio after an invitation from his old employer and discovers a nightmare of cartoon characters seemingly brought to life by the titular machine. Bendy and the Ink Machine uses a mixture of puzzle solving, environment exploration and combat to aid Henry on his journey through Joey Drew Studios. You will explore through a first person view and have limited physical actions such as running and jumping. Different items can be collected, some of which are required to perform various tasks before proceeding. Cans of bacon soup, a reference to the game's creator, The Meatly, and his partner Mike Mood can also be collected for both achievements and to restore Henry's health if he is injured. Combat is primarily focused around a variety of different melee based weapons such as an axe or pipe. In-game enemies all have different strength levels and resilience to damage, forcing you to be tactical about keeping out of reach and striking when necessary. Henry can retreat inside little miracle stations whenever enemies are nearby in order to recover or remain out of sight. If he takes too much damage, he can escape from the ink that consumes him and respawn at one of the numerous statues of Bendy that act as checkpoints. In addition, you can find numerous audio logs throughout the studio that give more details about the game's story. Particularly concerning about the fate of the studio and its employees, similar to the systems used in games such as Bioshock. Some of these laws can be missed and require further exploration to uncover the secret areas they often reside in. Benny and the Ink Machine's performance was decent. I think it could have been better with the hardware that was running on it. You'll notice that the game is running with a limited number of colors and that with the right programmer can free up resources. There is not much going on in the background that would make the game run poorly on newer hardware such as the 1050 Ti. When maxed out the settings with V-Sync on, it could not sustain 60 FPS at all. The GPU temps range from a high 66 with a low of 57C. The CPU's range was 62 to 76, which was good considering the heating design of this machine which is the Acer Nitro 5. While I was okay with what I saw, the FPS was just not impressive for what was on screen. There was nothing to justify the low frames and made me think that the game was just not optimized. Next, I kept the settings maxed out on 1080p, but turned VSync off. I was surprised to see that FPS improved without screen tear. In some parts of the level, the machine was able to sustain 60 frames per second, but sure enough, the frames decided to dip. I saw it go as low as 30 FPS and thought that was kind of crazy since there was nothing going on. I could be looking at a flat wall and the frames would just dip down. Quite disappointing. CPU and GPU temps were the same as before. I then switched to 1600 by 900 with max settings and of course, V-Sync was off. This was a whole lot better. The GPU temps were between 59 and 69C. This was two to three degrees higher than the 1080p setting, but FPS was significantly better and more stable. CPU was between 64 and 82, while having an average temp of 76C. This is also the top end of the first setting we tried, and again, we are getting more FPS. I think this could be the setting to use if you're on the Nitro 5. FPS went from 52 to 60 while staying in the high 50s most of the time. Though this was good enough, I wanted to go lower to see if I could get a constant 60 or above. The last setting was 720p with max settings and VSync was off. The last setting was 720p and I maxed out the settings and left VSync off. GPU temps were 56 to 64 C and was lower than the previous settings. The usage also looks to have went down as well. CPU temps were very close to the 1600 by 900 setting we used, which resulted in 66 to 80 C and staying mostly in the low 70s. Everything looks to be going great with the FPS this time holding a range between 56 and 60. There was a point in which I entered the room with ink creatures. 
I know that's not what they're called, but I don't want to spoil it for those that have not played the game. But anyway, as I entered the room, the FPS dived to 49 FPS for no apparent reason. So the question you might have is, why didn't you adjust the settings such as AA, Bloom, Blur, Ambient Occlusion, etc.? Well, that's an easy one. Removing some of those filters takes away from the game's look and feel. Some settings such as low, medium, and high can make the game look like this. I figured most will want to play the game like it was meant to be played, as well as having a good atmosphere with all the filters on. So what about the resolutions? Well, I picked those because it did not distort the game screen. I kept everything to a 16 by 9 ratio. I did not want to mix 4x3 or 16x10. Bendy and the Ink Machine is a game that I've never heard of. I was browsing the Steam store, just so you know I'm a sucker for games that look as though they are animations. Games like Wormster Dash and Cuphead are a few examples. Anyway, the game was on the recommended list so I tried it. Wow, I was surprised. At first, I was skeptical as you start with no weapon. But there was a story here that you could try and figure out. The place was empty and felt like a ghost town, but you just know there was something still here, something around lurking in the darkness. It just felt like it. I don't want to spoil, but there are some jump scares in the game, also some sad moments as well. I heard that the game was for teens, but personally, I enjoyed it a lot. If you like games such as Bioshock, but without the fighting mechanics, I don't think you could go wrong with this one. The game is not perfect as I was able to cause one of the monsters to get stuck in place so I could freely explore without getting killed. I've done that twice. It's not a big deal, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. Also, as you've seen in the FPS, it's not constant and could probably use some more optimization. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. There will be more videos on the way, and if you would like to see more, take a look around the channel. And I'll see you in the next game or stream. Mean Poo, out. So that's how it works. They told me I was perfect for the role. Absolutely perfect. Now Joey's going around saying
This haunted house seems like the way to go, but it's gonna need some power. Hang in there, Boris. I'm coming.